Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hours draws on apace. Four happy days, bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes, she lingers my desires. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bet to heaven shall behold the night in our sleeping Oh, fellow states, stir up the Athenian youths to merriment, turn melancholy forth to funerals. Hippolyta, I woo thee with my sword. And one day love doing the injuries, and we will wed in another key with pomp, with triumph, with reveling. I don't love it! I don't, I don't care! Do I care? I'm gonna marry her. A happy being, Theseus, our renowned king. Good Odysseus, what news of thee? Full of vexation <coughs> come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, my son. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Hast thou by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love? And stolen the impression of her vanity bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, conceits. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, into stubborn harshness. And be it so, my gracious duke, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which will either be to this gentleman or to her death. According to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermania? Be advised, fair maid. Two, your mother should be as a god, one that composes beauties ye one, to be as a form of wax by her imprinted within her power. Demetrius was a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. Here himself he is. When this kind, wanting your mother's voice, the other must be held the worthier. My, I would my mother look, but with my eyes. Rather your eyes, much with your judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not of what power I may do, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either prepare to die for disobedience to your mother's, or whether it's Demetrius, as you wedded. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Or I will yield my virgin pattern up unto his lordship, whose unwedged yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause by the next new moon, the sealing date betwixt my love and me. Upon that day, Either prepare to die for disobedience to your mother's will, or where's the mistress as you would for next. Relent, sweet Hermia. Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her mother's love, Demetrius, let me have Hermia's. Do you marry her? <laughs> Scornful Lysander, yes, he hath my love, and what is mine? My love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate to you. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, and, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauty as Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, all about it to his head, made love to Leader's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon the spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and it was Demetrius who spoke thereof. For you, fair Hermania, look, you arm yourself, you fit your fancies to your mother's will, or else the law of Athens will yield you up to death for a single life. Come, Hippolyta, good cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along, I must employ in some business against our nuptial. With duty and desire, we follow you. Goodbye, Demetrius. Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well between them from the tempest of my eyes. I mean, wrought that I could ever read, could ever hear my tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was different in blood. Oh, cross too high to be a thrall too low, or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes, or. If there were a sympathy and choice, war, death, or sickness, did lay siege to it. 
And let's teach our customary cough because of the trial patience as due to love and thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a little aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house below and sand lakes. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place the sharp Athenian mob cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet with thee once at Helena, to do observance to a morn of May, there I will stay for thee. Oh, my good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his strongest arrow with a golden head, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke, in the same place thou hast appointed me, oh, there will I truly meet with thee. Nick Bottoms, who evil? 
Who ready? Name what part I'm for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? It's a lover that kills himself most gallantly for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. Tell the audience to look to their eyes, for I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. I can play earthlies, rarely, or a part to tear a cat in. The raging rocks and shivering shots shall break the locks of prison gates, and thinnest bar shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish face. This was lofty. Now read the now read the names of the actors. This is Earthly's vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you shall play Thisbe. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is a lady that pyramids must love. Oh, nay, faith, let not me play a woman. <laughs> I have a beard. <laughs> that is all one. You shall do it in a mask, and you speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe, too. I will speak in a monstrous little voice.
Now, now, spirit, where wander you? Over hill, over dale, thorough bush, thorough briar, over park, over pale, thorough flood, thorough fire. I do wander everywhere, swift with the woman of spear, and I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. I must go seek some dewdrops up here, and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. So farewell, thou love of spirits, I'll be on. Our queen and all her elves come here anon. The king doth keep his rebels here tonight. Take heed to the queen not within his sight. For Oberon passed in fell in wrath, but she is her attendant hath. Stolen a lovely boy from an Indian king. She never had so sweet to change a lead. And jealous Oberon shall take the child, knife and train and trace the forests wild. But she, perforce, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers and makes him all her joy. Would they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear, or starlight spangled she? But they do swear, for elves do fear, creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape or maybe quite, or else you were that shrewd and maybe sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not he who frights the maidens of the villagery? Thou speakest to right. I am that merry wanderer of night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I, a fat bean fed horse, beguile. Name with the likeness of a fairy foal. And the wisest aunt tell me the saddest tale. And sometimes a three foot stool mistaketh me, put down topples she, and falls into a cock. But a room fairy, here comes Oberon, and here my mistress with that he were gone. Met my moonlight proud Titania. What jealous Oberon? Fairy skip hence. I have forsworn his better company. Fairy rash Weta, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here come from the farthest step of India? But that forsooth, bouncing Amazon. Your busking mistress and your warrior loves Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity? How canest thou thus? For shame, Titania, blast my career with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never, since the middle summer spring, met me on hill and dale, forest or mead. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious logs, which falling in the land have made every petty river so proud that they have overborne their continents. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents. You amended, it lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do not beg a little channeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of you. His mother was a votress of my order. But she being mortal, of that boy did die. And for her sake, I do rear up the boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long will this boy do you intend to stay? Perchance, till after Theseus' wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our rounds and see our moonlight revels here with us. Not shun me, I will spare your minds. Give me that boy, and I'll go with thee. Not for thy fairy king. Fairies, away! You shall try down right if I longer stay. <laughs> well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this girl till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle pup, come hither. Thou rememberest? Since once I sat on a promontory and heard it murmuring on a dolphin's back, uttering such to say in harmonious breath, that rude sea grew civil at her song to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. The very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cu uh, cupid, all arms, a certain Amy thought a fair vestal thrown by the west. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once, the herb that will be the eyelids laid. I'll put a girdle around the earth in forty minutes. And then, and then, uh, hurry. Having, I'll watch, I'll make a page render up to you, but who comes here? I'm invisible, and I'll overhear the confidine. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where's Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll stay, the other stay with me. Thou told me they were stolen onto this wood. And here I am, and wood within this wood, because I cannot leave my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. But yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. 
Do leave I... you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in the plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, I do love thee the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on thee. You do impeach your modesty too much, to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege. For that, it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I'm not in the night, nor doth this world not world good company. For you and my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin, the mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed, when cowardice pursues and valor flies. I will not stay thy questions, let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. By Demetrius, your own do send scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to you. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell, to die upon the hand I love so well. Fair thee, will them. Here to leave this grove, and thou shalt fly to seek thy love. Pass flower there, welcome wanderer. I pray thee, give it to me. <laughs> I know a bed where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and gnarling violet grows. Take thou some and seek through this grove, a sweet Athenian lady is in love, with a disdainful youth unknown to his eyes. But do it when the next thing be a spice. Maybe the lady thou shalt know the man, by the theme of garments he hath thought, infected by some hair that he may prove more fond of her than she who fell in love, and look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. Sense, sweet, of my innocence. Love takes meaning in love's conference. 
By that, I made my heart unto yours is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms entertained with a note, so then two bosoms and a single trope. Then by your side, no bedroom we deny. You're lying, Sophia. I do not lie. <laughs> <laughs> Lysander riddled very prettily. <laughs> Not much, but sure my manners and my pride, if her me meant to say Lysander bought. But, gentle friend, in love and courtesy, like further off, in human modesty. So far we could sit and good night, sweet friend. As you love the wish your eyes impressed. Amen, amen to that first prayer, say I. And then life, when I am born, here is my bed. Sleep, give me all his rest. Good night, my love. Mm. Oh, my sender hath been friend zoned. <laughs> <laughs> Here. 
Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Me thought a serpent eat my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord, what? Gone? Out of hearing? No sight, no word? Oh, alack, where are you? Speak and if you hear. Speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. What? I perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you. I will find immediately. Sometimes a horse I'll be, sometimes a hound. A hog, a headless bear, 
savory of them to make me afeard. Oh! <laughs> oh, bottom! Oh, don't chase! What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an ass head of your own, do you? Oh, bless thee, bottom, bless thee! Thou art translated! I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, <laughs> to fright me if they could. But I will walk up and down here, and I will sing my song before the Duke at the end of the play. My funny Valentine, sweet coming Valentine, you make me smile with my heart. What angel waits me from my flower bed? <laughs> Yet your looks are so laughable. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again for my ear as much as thou art of thy note, so my eyes enthrall into thy shape. <laughs> oh, methinks, mistress. <laughs> Not so, neither. If I could, I would get out of this wood. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. <laughs> I'll give these fairies to attend on me. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. <laughs> Ready. And die. And die. Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Feed him with apricots and dewberries. Purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries, and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. I cry, your worships, heartily. Your name, I beseech you, sir. Cobweb. Cobweb. I shall desire you of more acquaintance. Your name, sir. Bees blossom. Bees blossom. <laughs> your kindred make my eyes water ere now. Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. Oh. Tie up my love's tongue, bring him silently. <laughs> Pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty, 
Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear, as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hands. <gasps> out, dog, out, cur, thou drives me past the bounds of maiden's patience. If thou hast slain him then, henceforth never be numbered among men. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege, never to see me more. And from thy hated presence part ourselves, whether he be dead or no. There is no falling her in this fierce vein. Here therefore, for a while, I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid love to true love swipe. About about the wood, go swift and wet, and Helena of Athens look to fight. By some illusion, bring her, I'll charm her eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than the Tartar bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in the apple of his eye, let her doth spy. There is shines the gloriously as the Venus in the sky, when she be by, beg of her remedy. <laughs> Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Sell their fond pageant, see, boy, what fool these mortals be. It's quite close. The noise will make the cause of Demetrius to awake. Then we'll do at once rule one. That is sport alone. For those things do best please me, those that fall preposterously. Why should you think that I should rule with scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look. When I vow, I weep, and vow to mourn in their nativity, all truth appears. You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh, devilish holy fray. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her o'er? I had no judgment, for to her I swore. <laughs> Nor none in my mind, now you give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, and she loves her. Oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. <laughs> to what my love shall I compare thine eyes? Crystal is muddy, oh how ripe and show. Thy lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. That pure, congealed white, high toward snow. Fanned with the eastern wind, turns to crow. When thou holdst up thy hand, oh let me kiss this princess of pure white, the seal of bliss. Oh spite, oh hell, I see we're all bent to set against me for your merriment. <coughs> if you were civil in new courtesy, you would not do, do me thus much injury. If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so, to vow and swear and super praise my parts, when I am sure you hate me in your hearts. You are both <coughs> rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hermia, this you know, I know, and here with all good will, with all my heart, and Hermia's love, I yield to my heart, and yours of Helena, <laughs> to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do till my death. Never do prophets <coughs> waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her but as guess why sojourn. And now to Helen is to home return, there to remain. <laughs> Helena, it's not so. <laughs> thou art not by mine eye? Lysander fell? My dearest thank you brought me to thy sound, but why do I need this sound hate me so? Why well, should you stay? With whom love doth oppress to go? What love could press Lysander from my soul? Lysander's love, that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, more anglins the night than all yon fiery oaths and eyes of light. Why seek'st thou me? Could this not make thee know the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think it cannot be. Lo, she is one of the competitors. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to beat me with this foul vision? <laughs> <laughs> is all the counsel we two have shared? The hours we have spent when we have tried the hasty foot of time for parting us? Oh, is it all forgot? All school days friendship? Childhood innocence? And will you bend our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, it is not mainly. I am amazed at your passion.
passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face and major other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul? I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever counterfeit sad looks, meet mouths upon me when I turn with them, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. If you had any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare you well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon will Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul. Oh, oh excellent! I do not scorn her so. Helen, I love thee by my life, I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee. Oh, to prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. Oh, if thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. <laughs> what is that? Where would you text all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou bird. Vile thing will have Luke's bread shaped in me like a serpent. Why are you growing so rude? What change is this we love? Thy love. Out, Tawny Tartar, out. Out, loathe the medicine. Oh, hate it, potion heads. <laughs> Do you not trust me? Yes, sooth, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond for I could be. If we bond holds you, I'll not trust your word. What? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I will not harm her so. What greater harm can you do me than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? I am as fair as I was erewhile. Are you not Lysander? Am I not Hermia? By night you love me, but by night you left me. In earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt, be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, oh me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love! What, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, be faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you come to say, you come at me. Why so? I, that way goes the game. Now I perceive she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, she has grown so high in his esteem. Is it because I'm so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, for that my nails can claw unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, do not let her hurt me. You may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower heart again. Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. When she is angry, she is keen and true. Though she be but little, she is fierce. <laughs> little. Nothing but low and little. Why <laughs> do you let her clout me thus? Let me come to her! Get you gone, you dwarf! You minimus of hindering knobgrass may! You bean! You an acorn! <laughs> the word true officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her love. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend, never so little show of love to her. Thou shalt abide it. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try his right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee cheek by jowl. <laughs> <laughs> Helena, you mistress, this coil is long with you. Nay, go 
will not back. I will not trust you, I, nor longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands and mine are quicker for prey. My legs are longer, though, to run away. <laughs> <laughs> I am amazed and know not what to say. Resist thy negligence, or else command thy neighbors willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I am to know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? And so far blameless in my enterprise, I anointed an Athenian's eyes. Thou seest a place to these lovers seek a place to fight. Hide therefore, Robin, overcast the night. The starry welcome cover thou not on, the trooping fog as black as Akron. And to crush the herb into light sand, there's I the herb will enhance with this with your suffering, and then I charm release, and to my queen all, all things shall be peace. <laughs> up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. God will lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak now, <laughs> now. <laughs> Shout by this deer, if ever I thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way, fate misconstraineth me, to measure out my life on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, weary night, oh long and tedious night, abate thy hours, shine comforts from the east, so that I may back to Athens by daylight from these and my poor company detest. And sleep, and sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from mine own company. Yet let three come one more. <laughs> Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so woe. The devil with dew and torn with briars. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. <laughs> Heaven shield Lysander from my day, if it means a prey. And here I will rest till the perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground, sleep sound, I'll apply to your eye. Gentle lovers, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest. In true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eyes, and let the country proverb known, every man shall have his own. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. And he will have his mare again, and all shall be well. down upon this flowery bed while I, thy amiable cheeks, do coy and kiss thy fair large ears, my <laughs> gentle joy. <laughs> Will 
thou hear some music, my sweet love? Well, I have a reasonable good ear in music. <laughs> Let's have the tongs and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to be. <laughs> Truly a peck of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. I have a venturous fairy that will seek the squirrel's horn. No, no, I could have a handful of dry peas. I pray you, let not your people wait on me. For I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Oh. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou the sweet sight? For dawn it is now. I begin to be of being here late behind the wood. And in this next action shall be a fierce conversation dream. But first, I will release my fairy queen. Hast thou want to be? Hast thou want to see? Dine this buzz or keep this flower. Now, Titania, wake up, my sweet queen. <laughs> my Oberon, what visions have I seen? We thought I was enamored of an axe. <laughs> there lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how my eyes do loathe this visage now. <laughs> Science a while, Robin. Take off his head. Titania, music call and strike the dead. Music call. Music such as charming sleep. Now, when thou wakest with thine own eyes, fools me. Now thou and I are new at amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnity. Dad's in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly, and bless it all fair prosperity, and the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded by Theseus all in jollity. Small and undistinguishable. 
like far mountains turn it into clouds. He thinks I see things with parted eye, but everything seems double. So me thinks, and I have found Demetrius, like a jewel, my own and not my own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my mother, and he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let us follow him, and by the way, let us recount our dreams. When my cue comes, call me and I will answer. For my next is most fair Pyramus. Hey ho, Peter Quince, Flutes the bellows mender, Snug the joiner, Starbling, God to my life, Stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of what man could say it was. <laughs> me thought I was. Me thought I had. You <laughs> man is a past fool to say what me thought I had. I'll get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this stream. It'll be called Bottom Stream because it hath no bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and I will sing it at the latter end of this play before the Duke and Duchess. Pyramus there 
and doth kill himself. And when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made my eyes water. <laughs> the warm earth tears, the passion of laughter never shed. For are they, do they play it? No, my lord, not for you. I have read it over, and it's nothing, nothing in the world. We hear that play, for never any can be amiss. When Zephyrus and Dender to the end, go bring an event and take your place, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> to see wretchedness overcharged and to be in his service perishing. What gentle sweet, we shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing of this kind. In kind regard, we give thanks for nothing. Let him approach. If we offend, it is with our goodwill that you should think we come not to offend, but with goodwill to show our simple skill this is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite. We do not come as minds would content you. Instead, our true intent is all for your delight. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow does not staff up our points. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. Who is sound without the other? Who is next? Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you will know. Beauty and lady, this be a certain. This man, the blind and rough doth present woe. That vile wall which these lovers sunder, and through walls chink poor souls. They are content to whisper. <laughs> which let no man wonder, this man. With lantern, dog, and bush of thorn, doth present moonshine. As if you would know, my moonshine, lover, to be no scorn. This grisly beast, which lion and by name, the trusty Fisbee, coming forth by night, did scare away, or rather, did affright. Which lion, and as she fled, her mantle did fall, and lion, with bloody, vile, bloody mouth, did stain. Anon can act wrong from Pyramus with youth and tongue, whereat he finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat his blade with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached its boiling breast. <laughs> Tarrowing in mulberry shade, he never drew and die, for all the rest let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain. And hear large discourse while here they do remain. I wonder if the line is to speak. No wonder, my lord, one my age of many asses do. <laughs> <laughs> Thy stone. 
stones, for through whom I see no bliss. I curse thy stones thus for deceiving me. Oh, me thinks being sensible should curse again. <laughs> no, in truth, sir, deceiving me is thus Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. Not to worry, you, it will fall past, right as I told you. Yonder she comes. Oh, woe! Full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. <laughs> my love? Thou art my love, I think. <laughs> Curse this vile wall, for I kiss its hole and not your lips at all. <laughs> Wilt thou meet me in the same strange way and you shall kiss me? Die! <laughs> 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 
might yet still prove an ass. But how chance moonshine is gone before this becomes bound and finds her lover. She'll find it, my Charlotte. Look, here she comes, and her passion will end the play. <laughs> we think she should not use a long one for such a curious. I hope she will agree. She has fighting already with those sweet eyes. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak! Quite dumb? Dead? <laughs> Dead? A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes, these lily lips, this carry those yellow cowslip keys. <laughs> are gone! Are gone! <laughs> Lovers make moan. Tongue not a word. Come, trusty sword, come, blade, my breasts and broom. <laughs> and farewell, friends, and to the end, adieu, adieu. <laughs> adieu! <laughs> Oh, 